Hi, my name's Michelle Adams, and I'm here to share uh, some of my testimony. Uh, I was in a bad car accident in 2002. I met up with a girl that lived in my building. She had moved in after me and lived underneath me. And uh, her name was Debbie. I won't say her last name, but anyway, she has passed on. And I can tell you about the premonition about what I had when um, she was found dead. Um, well, one night we decided to go to a bar. We were both drinking. I had a couple of beers because I was a driver and she was driving. She was up dancing. She had met a guy. And uh, she was dancing. And at closing time, to make a long story short, she wanted to leave with this guy. Well, I didn't want her to go with him because she didn't know him and I felt responsible. Well, we had some words and whatever. And, you know, I, I told her, I wish you really wouldn't do this. You know, you don't know him. You just met him. And uh, she's like, I'll be okay. And, you know, here's my number and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll call you when I get to where I'm going. I was driving home and I didn't know that they were following me. They were really going back to her place, which I lived in the building also. They were following me, and um, uh, she had called me, and I stopped. It was on a Sunday morning, and uh, she said, uh, come and get me. She said, I, this guy, you know, the guy that she left with took her to a party, and they were having an orgy and snorting cocaine, doing all kinds of drugs, and his daughter was there, and he was having sex with his daughter, the father, the guy that she met, and just went on with this story, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I told you not to go, and, uh, you know, I said, well, where are you at? Well, she said that she was on Eastern Parkway, and that's the road I was driving on when she called me. I said, well, I'm right here. I'll turn around and come and get you. Well, I turned around. It was on a Sunday morning. I did a U-turn. There were no cars on the road. And I went back, uh, and I started looking at the addresses, and I couldn't find it. So I went into a store, and I tried to call her phone, and nobody answered. And this whole time, they were following me, looking for her. They were behind me, following me, and I didn't know it. Um, it was kind of raining and sleeting, not really nothing real bad. It was March the 3rd of 2002. This happened in Kentucky, in Louisville. Anyway, I started driving home, and when I did, my car hydroplaned. And when it hydroplaned, I started spinning. I seen a black mass come in through my window and come into my head and knock me slick out. It was a demon. Uh, now I know what it was. Uh, I hit a tree three times. I would hit the tree and bounce off. I could feel myself. I was like out, but I could feel my body in the car. I would hit the tree and bounce off, hit the tree and bounce off three times. Each time it was ejecting me from the car and my face was in the tree. It tore off my nose, my lips, shattered all the bone in my face. My face is nothing but metal from here on down. I had scars all over me, scars above my eye. They did a good job at putting me back. They had to use a modeling picture to put me back together. Well, I kept dying on them. I kept losing blood and dying and dying. Well, I went in and I died the 17th time. My pastor, my mother's pastor was in the room with me and held my hand during all surgeries. I heard him screaming to the doctors before I went out, before I died the 17th time. I said, she's going to live. And I was, I was under medication and all. I could hear this. I don't know if I was partly out of my body or if I came out, if I had already died and I was hearing him. Is what I think it was. But I heard him saying, I said to keep working. The Lord told me she's going to live. She's not going to die. Keep working. The doctors were throwing their clipboards in the floor and taking their hats off and throwing them their scrub hats and saying they worked so hard on me and I was a beautiful girl and they were so sorry. They couldn't do no more for me. I come up out of my body and I started floating. I was floating over my body. I felt no pain, no nothing. I was looking down at myself. And I was thinking, what are they, you know, crying about? What 
and my mom's pastor is here and why is he crying? He was over top of me and I could see he did have some blood on his clothes, like laying where he was laying over top of me. I could see some blood on his shirt. He had on a white shirt. And I was like, oh my gosh, who is that? I didn't recognize it was me because my face was so mangled in the bandages and I was on life support. Uh, my lungs had collapsed. I had a trach, uh, a feeding tube, colostomy bag for three years. Uh, I was sent home to die. Anyway, I come up out of my body and I started noticing uh, their scrub hats and then putting them back on their heads, the ones that had threw them down, you know, for slamming their hats on the floor, taking them off their head and just like throwing them because like, they worked so hard on me and they were, you know, just in disbelief that they kept bringing me back and this time I just died. I was dead for like, I think... Um, 27 minutes, 27 minutes it was on my paper. I have proof, at all, proof of all this. Anyway, uh, I started noticing on their caps, like bullfrogs, Harley Davisons, and some of them had uh, like graffiti of God, godly things on their cap and crosses and Jesus saves, things like that, you know. And I thought, those are neat caps. I paid great attention to their caps. Uh, well, I started floating around. The lights started blinking off on the in the room, and uh, they kind of looked around. You know, they blinked on about three times. They come back on, and uh, I just kind of looked at them all, you know, and just thinking, wow, that must be me laying there, but how can I be out of my body? Well, when I started thinking that, I started drifting into a light. It was a bright light. And then I started going into a gray light, and it started getting darker. And I didn't feel my body moving. It, moving. it felt like the light was moving, like I was traveling in the light. And it started getting grayer and darker and darker and darker till I got pitch black and I couldn't see. Wherever I was going, I, I finally landed like on my feet. I could feel myself on solid ground. And I could feel my body, but I didn't feel no pain. It was like I was alive. I was alive. Um, I looked around in this place, and I looked straight ahead. There was an iron black rod iron gate with a gigantic keyhole where an old key would go into it, but there were no keys. And I looked through the rod iron gates. There was a spiral staircase that went up, and it said the sign up above in through the, uh, them iron gates and black rod iron gates said, welcome to the uh, gates of hell in blood-curdling letters, like in a lithographing kind of, but it looked like they were bleeding down the way they were written. I looked up to this spiral staircase. I was outside of the gate. Something, a force started sucking me through the gate, and I was pulling myself back with my hands up in the air like I didn't want to go. I was trying to fight this force. It sucked me through the gate. I looked down at my feet and I could see great big pits, pits. I could smell decaying flesh and bodies and death all around me. The most pungent smells I ever smelled in my life. I looked down at the ground and these demons, what I know now are demons, these, these scaly reptile looking beings with long tails with pointed razors on the end of their tails and all the way down. Their eyes were slanted upward like this in a point and they were blood red, far red and their ears were at points that stuck straight up and they had scales all over their bodies and they kept popping up and it is this force was sucking me through the rod iron gate. Their tails were wrapping around my legs and cutting, them. I, cutting my legs. I could feel the pain. It sucked me up to this spiring staircase, and I looked, and there were doors, like big metal doors, and the walls, there were no walls. It was just a dark gray matter. I get up to the first door, and it opens and I heard welling and gnashing of teeth. I heard people crying. And the door opens a little wider and it shuts in my face. Like, you know, am I going to do it? Will I do it? That kind of thing. Like playing with me. 
Well, it starts sucking me up to the second door. And uh, it opens up it, the same way as the first door did. I seen three doors there, but the spiral staircase kept going up. I believe the reason why I seen the three doors was for my sins, the third level of hell I was going to. I come to the second door, and it did the same thing, and I heard the same thing. I get up to the third door, and it slams. It opens up and slams. I heard the same thing of the wailing and crying and saved me and helped me. And, you know, I didn't know nobody's voice, but I heard people. And uh, I was so scared. I didn't couldn't think to pray. I couldn't do nothing. And then I started thinking, God, why am I here? Why? Please help me. I was like saying, help me in my mind. I couldn't speak. I could only think it in my mind. All of a sudden, at that third door, I flew off that step. I didn't go back down the star, spiral staircase, like walk down or anything. I started going back into a light. This white, to a, the light was, well, it was dark. It was still dark. It was real black, and then it starts getting grayer, 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 you know, lighter gray. And then I go back into this bright white light. And I come back into my body, and when I did, it felt like a 10-ton house landed on me. It was the worst pain I ever felt in my life, the worst pain. Um, I asked my pastor later on why I felt all that pain coming back in my body. He said that I was experiencing birth pains. I was being born again, and it made sense to me. Um, this is kind of hard, you all. Uh, I come back into my body and, uh, the machines just started working, started breathing. They were getting ready to sign my, uh, death, uh, certificate and all that, you know, the time and they were talking about it, you know, and uh, the nurses were coming in and prepping me, done put the sheet over me and everything, that my machines were still hooked up to me. They were going to let my family see me before they took it all, took everything off. They were going to let them come in. They were in the next room waiting, and uh, they hadn't told them yet that I had died. They were getting ready to, uh, you know, go get them and sign my death paper, let my parents sign it and all. Uh... I come back into my body, and then I, I, after all this, to make a long story short, I'm sorry, they wheel me back into a room in intensive care. These doctors, I wake up, I don't know if it's, I, it was, I guess, that same day, you know, after the anesthesia wore off. Uh, I started pointing at the doctors and laughing when they came in at their hats, and I was pointing, and I was pointing up. And they were like, wow, you know, what is she doing? And I kept pointing at their hats. And they would touch their head, and they're like, you're my hat? And I was like, yeah, and they thought that was weird. One of the doctors said, Miss Adam, if we hold a clipboard, can you write down? We, You died. You were dead for like 27 minutes. Did you have an out-of-body experience? I guess because the lights blinked on and off. And also, you know, I was dead for that long, and I came back into my body, and I shook my head yes, and I started crying tears. I could feel tears falling to the floor. I was crying so hard, and I kept pointing upward. I couldn't talk because I had a, a trachonotomy and, you know, a machine breathing for me, but I was able to write. Um, they gave me, they put a pen in my hand. And I started writing on their hats what I seen. And I started, cause they, when they come in, some of them didn't have their hats on. And a couple of them did. I started pointing to them, and I wrote down the name of the cap that they had on their head. I was completely out of it when I went into that room. I was, they had me under anesthesia. I never met those doctors, never seen them. Um... I started writing the names. There were like 13 doctors in there, and they, they couldn't believe it. They said, how did she know this? She was dead. She was clinically dead. 
And uh, they, the one doctor said, we need to call in a psychiatrist. And I started crying hard because I felt like they didn't believe me. Well, the psychiatrist come in and uh, he asked me to start writing some things. And I was crying. And I said, they don't believe me. I wrote, they don't believe me. I said, I went to hell. And he asked me what I seen there. It was horrible. I mean, it was worse than what I can tell you all. Hell is for real. And it was horrible. Uh, it was awful. But anyway, I, I hate to think back about this, but I know somebody needs to hear this. I have to find somebody... I need to let people hear my story. My mother always told me to give my testimony. And this happened in 2002. And since I found my calling, I found God. I'm a Christian. And I know my calling. I know what it is. But anyway, um, this doctor believed me. He said these doctors were wanting him to put me on medication because they thought that the brain injury I suffered from the frontal and back lobe was really messing with my brain. But I could think normal. My brain wasn't messing with me at all for what they didn't know. Um, the doctor, the psychiatrist told him, look, I'm not putting her on no medication. I have people that go through things like this every day, and I hear this all day. He said, she is not crazy. She truly had an out-of-body experience, and I believe what she's telling me. He said, now, good day, gentlemen. He said, I've got things to do and people to see. He walked out of that room, and I never seen him again. To make a long story short, they sent me home, and uh, I, I still couldn't walk or talk. They said I'd never walk or talk again. Stay tuned for part two for when God healed me with his audible voice. Thank you for listening.